The car chase in Chicago, Chris from the beginning wanted to do something really extraordinary and fast. We wanted to be able to use the Batmobile as a real car and have a real car chase that looks back to, you know, the French connection and films like this, not the usual kind of studio-bound uh, use of the Batmobile. It's very rare that you drive a vehicle in a stunt sequence more than 50 or 60 miles per hour. We took this Batmobile and drove in speeds up to, up to 80, 90 miles an hour, I think. And then on the open road, we got up to 100 miles an hour. There's no trick photography. It's real time, real speed. You know, when the charge is going 100, we're going 100. Our basic approach to tracking with the Batmobile is a device called the Ultimate Arm which is a, uh, basically a Mercedes ML55 with a, a robotically controlled crane arm that gives you shots that you can't get any other way on moving vehicles. The first night of tracking, they were shouting out speeds of 86, 88 miles an hour. I've never done speeds like that, only on helicopter tracking shots. But to do it from car to car tracking is that's fast. The director's in this Mercedes with the crane arm on it flying along at 100 miles an hour. The Batmobile's flying along at 100 miles an hour. And so really there's no room for error. I mean, one little thing goes wrong and, and, so, and somebody's life is in danger. On this film, George has probably done some of the best driving I've ever seen in all the years I've been doing it. He was absolutely tremendous. There was a particular shot in Chicago to come down an exit ramp uh, into like, this big bus depot, and they wanted the car to come in and, and slide sideways, almost do like a complete 360, and then back out and get in between two cars. And at first, I was always kind of like, oh, I don't know if it'll do it. And the first time we did it, it did it so easily. There was not one stunt where the car didn't drive away from it. It always managed to drive away from it. And we had to break this huge breakaway wall. No matter how breakaway it is, it's never going to be that breakaway. And I, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to put, didn't want to put the car through it. We did it. She, she got a few scratches, broke the glass, and, but um, apparently she's up and running again now. So I'll ask if I can keep it, take it home at the end of the film. This evening we're doing the final part of the car chase sequence. Batman loses the helicopter and the police cars that are chasing him and then um, hits the jump, takes off, flies across a river and into his um, bat cave. We're going to do the takeoff and we'll land the car into a, a box rig just to protect the car and then the entry into the bat cave will shoot later at Shepton on a stage where we'll actually jump the car through a waterfall and land it on the stage. The landing in the back cave we're doing for real with our real two-ton car. Initially, we were going to build a long run up outside and actually drive it in, but we had big limitations within the studio, how we could get through the door. It was very narrow. We only had like three or four inches each side of the car. We actually decided in the end to stick a nitrogen cannon in it and fire it off of a ramp just the other side of the waterfall. The flip side is we had to stop it very quickly because it would have gone straight out the other side of the, the set. So we had a restraining cable on it so we could stop it within eight, ten feet. Like everyone's 